The construction industry can be a dangerous place to work, and although you might not associate being rushed away in an ambulance with a manual handling accident, make no mistake, it can happen. Let's consider back injuries for a moment. Manual handling at work is a major cause of slip discs, an injury that everyone's heard of. You most probably know someone who has suffered one. If you do, you'll know how completely disabling and how incredibly painful it can be. What would such an injury mean to you? In most cases, a slip disc means being disabled for between four to six weeks. That's at least four weeks stuck at home. Think about that. That's at least four weeks on sick pay. Think about that. Worse still, you'll never be the same. At work, you'll be wary of your back. Playing sports, you'll be wary of your back. Playing with the kids, you'll be wary of your back. In fact, you'll be wary of your back for the rest of your life. Think about that. So next time you're about to start a manual handling task, think about this. Does the load need to be manually handled at all? You shouldn't manually handle a load unless there's no alternative and you really have to. Long-standing guidelines published by the Health and Safety Executive suggest that for an average person, the upper limit for lifting a load close to your chest is roughly 20 kilograms for men and 15 kilograms for women. So therefore, it's not a good idea to attempt to lift heavy blocks and curbstones weighing over 20 kilograms. Remember, these weights are only guidelines and it's the individual's own capabilities for lifting that are most important. And holding the load out in front of your body will double the load effect. So that would be an upper limit of 10 kilograms for men and 7.5 kilograms for women. Remember, ask yourself, does this load need to be manually handled at all? Think about it. Can moving this load be done by a handling machine, such as a telehandler, for instance? Can it be done with the aid of mechanical handling equipment? Certain manual handling tasks are better done by a handling machine, as not only do they greatly reduce the risk of injury, they often perform the task quicker and more efficiently. Obviously, it's important to only use equipment that's suitable for the task and that the load to be moved is within the safe working limits of the equipment. What about the awkwardness of a large load? It's not just about the weight of a load. Big boxes may be lightweight, but they can still pose manual handling issues due to their size or awkward shape. Can the load be broken down into smaller, easier to handle amounts? If using equipment, make sure that it's suitable to use in the particular work environment. For instance, if the ground conditions are soft, it's better to use a trolley with four wheels instead of two. But before using any equipment, it's important that you know how to use it properly. Make sure that you've been trained to use it. If the load has to be manually handled, what does the load weigh? If there's no packaging or other information about the weight of the load, try rocking it before lifting it to get an idea of its weight. This also helps to establish its centre of gravity. Can the load be lifted by one person? It's not a case of can it be lifted by one person, the real question is should it be lifted by one person? And if there's any risk involved, then a multi-person lift should be planned, considering the following. It's best to use people of the same height and build, so the load can be equally shared. How far does it have to be moved? Can it be manually handled over the distance? Are rest points needed? And is there a suitable set-down place at the end? Is the handling area and route clear of hazards? Having agreed the planned lift, then one person should take control of lift. Make sure this is agreed beforehand. 